translations. So the definition of a translation is uh, to move a shape left or right and or up and or down. Okay, the translated shape looks exactly the same size as the original shape and it's in exactly the same um, orientation or direction. Okay, so if we had a shape, for instance, that would be a, a right angle triangle and we translate it, it could move either left or right, it could move up or down, and it could move both, left and up, left and down, right and up, right and down, okay? But it will still stay at the end in the same orientation as it started. It's not going to rotate, it's not going to go turn backwards or way around, it's not going to reflect, okay? It's not going to get bigger or smaller, it will stay exactly the same. So let's dive into this first question. It says to translate triangle C by eight squares right and one square down. Okay, so the first starting point is we always go left or right first. So we've always going to do that movement first. And then we're going to follow it by up or down. Okay. So let's have a look what we're going to do. Eight squares and we're going to the right. So we're going to the right, which is this way. Okay, eight squares. So we're going to pick any square, any vertex on this triangle. I'm going to pick this bottom one here. Okay, and we can see that vertex is negative three on the x-axis. So because we're going left and right, we're going to start with negative three. We're going to go towards the right and we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight squares. So we're going to move that to the point where x is equal to five. It's got eight squares to the right. It now tells us to go one square down. So we start from where we got up to on that corner and we go one square down. That means that my bottom vertex on that triangle is going to go to that point. Okay. So I'm just going to rub out how we got there. And we've just got that vertex at the bottom there just in red. Okay. So that point there is going to be the bottom of my triangle. Now I could do this for each corner. I could go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I'm going to drop one, go down one. That's going to be my next vertex on the, on the triangle. Now if I want to draw that in, Okay, I can see I've got my shape there. The alternative way of doing that, I will do this final one exactly the same way. And I'm just going to take this one out. Okay, and this top one is going to give me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we drop one square down. And that's going to be my top of my triangle. Okay. And you'll see we've then got my triangle there. Okay, so sometimes it will tell you to label it as a new new letter, it doesn't on this one. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put C and I'm just gonna put a little dash. The terminology or the notation used for um, moving or different objects, okay, we've got the object being the original, and then we've got the image of it. Okay, so we're gonna move that, we would call the original C, and we would call the image of it C dash. Now, I'm just gonna go back to the start of this question. So again, if I did that first move, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, down one, we know that that first point is gonna come just there okay now the other way I could do this is I could say well from my first point I go one across to the left and one up and that's going to be my second point one across to the left one up that's going to be my second point from my original point I've got one to the right and two up and that's going to be my top point one to the right two up and that's my top point 
So having drawn those points in, you can see I've still got the same three points and I still come up with the same triangle. Okay, and that would be C dash. Okay, let's have a look at question two. Uh, if you wanna have a go at this one, pause the video and then see how you get on. Okay, let's see how he did. Translate rectangle A, four squares to the left this time, and three squares up. So I'm going to the left, four squares, and then I'm gonna go up, three squares. So, I'm gonna pick any corner, I'm gonna pick this bottom corner here, and I'm gonna go one, two, three, four to the left, and one, two, three, up. So my bottom corner will turn it turn around to there. The method I prefer is I would prefer to find one corner and then measure everything from that one corner. So I've got one square to the right, two squares up, one square to the left, two squares down. Okay, and that would be my a dash. How did you get on? Good. So, the reason we do left the first, okay, is because we always go, it follows the same things as we do with co coordinates along the corridor and then up the stairs. And you can see how I've written it on the side here. If I just put a bracket around those two, um, those two vectors, parts of a vector, a vector is when we've got the left and right at the top and the up and down at the bottom. And it's the direction that transformations uses and tra translations uses. So in this format, we've got exactly the same information, but instead of telling us to the left and to the right, it gives us a, a numerical value. So if we try and think about what this may mean, think where we've got zero, Okay, if we go to the right, we're going up, so that's going to be a positive value, and to the left of zero, we're going down to a negative value. Okay, so if my top number is positive, I'm going to go to the right. If my top number is negative, I'm going to go to the left. So this one is positive five, so if I pick any corner, so let's pick that bottom corner there, I'm going to go to the right, five spaces. One two, three, four, five. So that's gonna to move to that point there. Okay, so that's done the top part of the vector. We now need to look if we're gonna go up or down. And again, we can see there is a negative six. So exactly the same as with the uh, x-axis on the y-axis where I've got a zero. If I've got a positive value, I'm going up. If I've got a negative value, I'm going down. So I've got negative six, so I'm gonna drop six places. One, two, three, four, five, six. And coming down in a vertical line from that point, six spaces, gets me down to the coordinate three minus five. Now again, like I said, if it was me, I would just go, well, it's one, two, three, four squares high from that point. One, two, three, four squares high. And I'm going to go back two to the left two and then up two to get to that middle coordinate. So I'm going back two, up two. That's where my coordinate's going to be. And I can just draw in the size of my triangle. Again, it doesn't tell me to label it anything in particular, so I'm going to just label it A dash. <coughs> Have a go at the one on the right, see how you get on. Where would you place this as a translation? Let's see how you did. So the top translation left and right is positive. So that means I'm going to the right, seven squares. Then I'm gonna go up five squares because it's both positive values. So I'm going to the left, uh, to the right, sorry. And then I'm gonna go up. So let's pick a corner. This time I'm gonna pick the top corner there. So I'm gonna to go to the right seven, 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I'm going to go up five, one, two, three, four, five. So my coordinate will finish off at four, two. And looking at this square, remember I'm going to go down one, to the left two, up one, and then back where I started. Down one, to the left two, up one, and back where I started. So that would be my new shape. And this time it does tell me, label the shape B. So if it does tell you to label it, make sure you label it exactly how they tell me to label that shape. So this one would be shape B. And again, if we want to check that, we can pick any corner. So let's pick this top corner. Okay. Now, if I go across to seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then up five, one, two, three, four, five, I get to that top corner on that same shape. Okay. Let's move on. Looking at the, this question, this is not actually wanting you to do the translation. It's done the translation for you. It just wants you to write what the vectors would be. So how has that shape moved? So the first thing we need to look at is read the question really, really carefully. Um, write down the translation vector. So I know it's going to be a number by another number. Okay, in that format. Okay. And then we need to look at, we're going from A, so this shape here, to B. So we're going to this shape here. So how would I get from that point to there? Now, I'm going to pick one top, I'm going to pick the top corner this time. And I need to make those two points match up. So I'm going from one of the top corners on that shape to the top corner on the other shape. So we're going one, two three I've gone to the right three so that's going to be positive three and then I'm going one two three four five squares up again positive because I'm going up so that would be three five have a go at the other two see how you get on pause the video let's see how you did so this time we're doing the translation vector from B to C. So I'm going to start at B this time. Okay, I'm going from this one to C to this one here. Now again, if you see what I've done there, I've just put the dot in that bottom square. I could just look at the square as a whole instead of just at one point on the square. Where is this square? What do I need to do to move it to um, the square C? Now remember, we need to do the x-axis first, so we need to do left or right first. Well, to get from here to C, okay, I'm going to go left, and I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 squares to the left. So because I'm going left, remember, it's going to be negative. So negative 5. And then I've one square above, so I need to drop one square, minus one. So I'm going down, so it's going to be negative, and I've dropped one square. So my vector for B to C would be negative five to negative one. C. Okay, again, we're going to write down the vector. Sometimes these are called column vectors as well, as translation vectors, because it's in a column. So what's the translation vector that would take C to A? So we're going this one to that one now. So remember we're doing the left and right first. So to come over to here, I need to go one, two squares along. It's going to the right, so it would be positive. And then I'm going to drop down this time. One, two, three, four, down four squares. So minus four. Okay, so I've gone to the right, so I know it's going to be a positive vector. I've then gone down, so I know it's going to be a negative vector. Okay. Now, sometimes you may get a question that asks you to actually describe fully the single transformation. 
So if we look at this, if we had to say what the vector would be, and again, let's pick a, the top corner. So I'm going to pick this top corner here, and we're going to go over to the top corner on the other shape. Now to get from A to B, okay, bearing in mind, you can see there's going to be a little bit of trouble here because this is like halfway on a square. So it's going to be quite difficult to work out initially. So let's think we're going to go one, two, three, four, five. That's in line, vertically in line with where that corner is. And I've gone five squares to the left. And then I'm going to go up from that point. Remember, I'm halfway into a square. I'm going to go one, two, three and a half. So I'm going up three and a half. So let's think how that vector is going to be listed down. It's going to the left, so that's going to give me a negative, negative five. It's going up, so that's going to give me a positive, three and a half. So for this format, I'm going to put 3.5. Okay, I need to describe fully the single transformation. It hasn't told me it's a translation. So you need to say which one of the four transformations you've done. Well, it's been translated. Okay, so it's a translation. Okay. And we need to write the column vector of what the translation would be negative 5, 3.5. Okay? And that's all we need to write. We don't need to write anything else. It'll be a two mark question. So that would be one mark for the translation and two marks, second mark for the translation vector. Okay. Now you could write that out in full if you want. Um, if you didn't want to put the translation vector, you could say translation and it's gone uh, five squares uh, left and three and a half squares up. Okay, and that would give you the same marks as well. So as long as you detail down exactly what's happened, you're all good.